welcome to introduction to course 2 of PG Diploma in Women's and Gender Studies. This is the second course in the chronology of this diploma program which will talk about gender and power. Before going ahead, let me introduce to you the panelists. I have with me Dr. Smita Patil who is assistant professor with School of Gender and Development Studies and has been co closely associated with this course. Hello. Myself, Neeli Masharvastav, associate professor with School of Gender and Development Studies and also the course coordinator. Before we go ahead, I would like to advise the, our students that while reading this course, they should keep the understanding which they have developed from the first course of this program that is MWG 001 so that they can contextualize gender implications with the theoretical backdrop they have de developed by going through course 1. Let me also take up with you that what is this course about? That what are we going to discuss and read through this course? The course talks about various facets of power in a society as to how power displays or manifests in our society. The course also covers the yardsticks which are culture, religion, tradition, customs, values, morality and how gender is embedded, how gender is seen through these yardsticks and power is manifested through these socio-cultural yardsticks. I would also like to remind that it is not only gender as a system which is used for operation of different sections or individuals in society. There are other systems also, there are other forces and factors that leads to operation, oppression of people and sections in the society. You will get answers to difference between sex and gender, public private discourse, impact of class, caste and ethnicity, power and citizenship, nationalism, regionalism, patriarchy within institutions and system, power and religious minorities and manifestation of power. Now let us come to the course structure. The course has four blocks in it and each block talks about a particular aspect related to manifestation of power. The first block which is regarding concepts talks about the concepts which are basic to the understanding of gender. So without reading these concepts you will not be able to understand that how power is regulating the systems in our society. The first unit of this block is women in patriarchy. Here the effort will be to look at the concept of patriarchy juxtaposed in the, with reference to women and also other genders. This will also look into locating women and patriarchy in Indian context. Then the unit will also talk about the relationship between patriarchy, caste, class and especially in context of India we will look as to how class is a factor for operate, operating patriarchy. Then we will also study concept of capital patriarchy in the unit. The unit will end with discussion on public private forms of patriarchy. We come to the second unit of this block which will be sex and gender. The unit starts with that how sex and gender as a system evolved. Then there will be description of gender roles and patterns within our society. The next aspect covered in this unit is sex and gender binary. Then is the feminist critique 
of sex and gender binary system. We move to the third unit that relates to masculinities. Masculinities is an emerging concept and has to be seen in the backdrop of emerging concerns relating this concept. Then what is the concept and notion of masculinity and body? Next we will move to canolial ordering of gender along with public-private dichotomy in India in relation to masculinities. The unit next focuses on the recent scholarships in masculinity studies. The last unit of this block talks about public-private dichotomy. The unit begins with the meaning and debates on the concept of public and private dichotomy. Then we move to nature and culture debates. Thereafter, the unit discusses personal is political, closing with problematics of personal and public distinction. The last aspect covered in this unit will be a public private dichotomy in relation to family, governance and reproduction. In the next block, we will be studying about gender and spectral inequalities. In this unit, we will be talking about the as gender and class debate. In the previous course, you already uh, have been introduced about the Marxist feminism. In this unit, uh, about the uh, gender and class, we will be trying to look at the more theoretical debate how the uh, Marxist feminism has taken form in. and in the current discourse we are trying to look at the Indian discourse since 1970s onwards. In the next unit we will be talking about gender and caste. We will be looking at the Indian society how it is stratified and what are the gender roles played within based on that. We will be talking about the what is grammatical patriarchy and the Dalit patriarchy. In the next unit, which, uh, which already you have studied in the first course, MWGS002 about uh, black feminism and in, that, uh, in this unit, we will be looking at the debate of race and ethnicity. Uh, we will be looking at, uh, we will try to look at the historical background of how the race, racism emerged and how gender has affected in that. In the ethnicity debate, we will be talking about the in the Indian context about the tribal women's issues and in the manifestation of power, considering the all three units, their linkages and the connectivity with the power discourse, how the power is manifested through the whole uh, ideology of the various institutions. For instance, that how through institutions, how through social uh, so, um, culture, economic power, political power, the power is manifesting. In the next block, we will be talking about gender, state and community. In this first unit, we'll be, uh, we will study nation, nationalism and citizenship. In this unit, we broadly study about how women has contributed to the nation and how their efforts to contribute as a citizenship is always invisible and it is time to actually to, uh, the, uh, to take up these issues and the discourse of citizenship. Why is it that woman is always treated as a secondary citizen? So in the next unit, region and regionalism, we will study about the women's contribution to the region. For instance, if we look at the Telangana issue, there are lots of women who are taking forward for the separate Telangana demand. But isn't it their efforts are visible? So the effort should be that for the separate Telangana, how women are taking forward these issues of uh, issues of you know the separate Telangana, and what is the contribution of women in the region and regionalism? In the next unit. We will be talking about the religious minorities and communalism. It is always seen that when we talk about the minority who are the most affected is the women. If you look at 
the entire discourse of the religious minority, it is the women who is getting affected more in the whole communal debates. And we will be talking about the current discourse about the religious minorities for instance, uh, the Muslim, the Sikhs, uh, the Christians and so on and so forth and trying to look at the current emerging debates which will have a linkages with the next block. The last block talks about gender and institutions that how gender is operating or is being addressed through the various institutions in our society. So, we begin with looking at marriage and family in the first unit. The unit starts with the understanding of the institutions of marriage and family. Then it is defining and theorizing marriage. Then the unit moves to history and functions of family. Then notions of family and marriage in West as well as in India. Also the changing notion of family and marriage both in Western and Indian society. The unit then covers the last aspect about that how marriage has changed and how family as an institution has changed from time to time both in Western and Indian context. Unit 2 is about gender and education. We begin with understanding the relationship between gender and education. Then what are the aims of schooling of women and how it is affecting the nation and the other institutions which are associated or which are closely in association with the institution of education. Then there will be a review of policy. Then feminist perspective in education will be discussed through various discourses of curriculum analysis and feminist nails in content and pedagogy. Then we move to the third unit where we will be looking at gender and law. We begin with what is the concept of law and what is equality meant in the legal terms. Then we define law and talk about gender equality and the provisions of constitution which promotes equality of gender and also provides special provisions for weakened section of the society. Then there will be a survey of legislation which will be specific to gender or there will be uh, and there will be a discussion on personal laws and the unit will fold up with discussion of law in labor and, and how they are representing gender interest. The last unit of this block will concentrate on women and work and we will begin with how women are excluded in from the mainstream definition of work in our various data collection exercises. Then what is the difference between employment and work because that is where the women factor comes into play. That women work but the, most of the time they are not in employment so they are not categorized as workers. Then what then we will discuss what is the concept of unpaid work and how it affects gender. Then we will look at gender and work through theoretical frameworks. The unit will end up with recent developments on women and work in India which will entail discourses in feminism, women as self-employed workers, informationalization of women in employment and serviceization of women's employment. With this we finish the course contents of block 4 and also course 2 on gender and power. You are learning develop a critical perspective, build a connections with MWG 001 understand gender and power in a day to day life situation and discuss gender implications on societal institutions and system. As you can see there will be term and evaluation which will be through subjective examinations. Then there will be periodic evaluation 
through assignments. Assignments will be sent to you and you have to write it down in your own language and your understanding through after reading of the material and it is advised that you don't copy the same language and the same content but write it in your own language as to make an assessment of your learning from going through various material which are available to you in the form of printed matter or through CDs or through discussions as well as radio conferencing. Then there will be a method of self-evaluation by way of checking your progress and activities which is inbuilt in the material. Then you can also assess your understanding by attempting unit and questions which will also be preparation for your term and exams. I should I would also like to tell you that term and examination will have 70% weightage whereas other forms of evaluation will have 30% weightage in the overall evaluation for this course. Let's bring to you that how you can get more con uh, information about this course and about this program and also if you have any queries related to this course you can always contact me at nilima shivastav at ignu.ac.in and the phone number on which I can be contacted is 011-2957-1612. I hope this introduction will provide you with basic information about this course and will help you to go through the material that you have received and then ask for queries or clarification that arise after going through the contents. We hope that you are going to enjoy reading this course and also see that how gender and power go hand in hand in our society and how gender is one of the institutions, one of the ways in which oppression is there in our society. Thank you. Thank you.